Ahoy, shipmates! Welcome to the Dits on Wrestling podcast, the Royal Navy's only pro wrestling pod. And it's the start of a brand new series. Well, actually, technically, the start was on Saturday, but this is where it really kicks off. This is where we get our teeth sunk into the meat of the GM mode that has started on the Dits on Wrestling podcast. And I can't do it alone, of course, because I have my... Well, he's, he is kind of my co-host for the next five weeks, but really, he's my opposition. It's the yep. Raw General Manager, Anthony. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm very conflicted because I'm excited to be here, but also as my sworn enemy for the next five weeks, um, I'm just also conflicted. Like, we've, we've drafted separate teams. We're going to do battle in multiple ways and forms, and, of course, whoever loses this series must never podcast again, as is the blood oath that we have signed, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we can fantasy book that if you want, and then you turn it like WWE yeah. do. I could do that. But I'm excited that. as shit. We, uh, yeah, the, de- the debut episode for this, we launched the draft and everything this past Saturday, and this is something that we've been building to f- to- for a while, building towards for a while, and had this idea, and it lined up, and uh, you and I were talking offline about it, and we didn't want it to, knowing what we had to do in order to make this work, it takes prep work and it takes actual like planning and thought, not that the regular pod does not, but more so in this regard hmm. to make everything coherent and nice. And you had mentioned like the worry of it feeling like tedious or like bothersome, and I think both you and I are in agreement that like we sat down to do it, and as we started doing it, it was just super fucking fun yeah. and very rewarding, and I, I'm always excited to be on the Dow pod and to do this thing that we do every week. Um, but I am, I am extremely excited to see, yeah, what you do and how my show comes across. And I'm excited to finally be able to see some WWE that makes me not want to throw up. <laughs> we'll see. You haven't heard my show yet. That's true. I expect yeah. to be very sports entertained by your show. Oh, you will. You will be. Uh, but but uh, you don't actually have to worry about that until Friday because Friday. today is all about you. That's right. Mm-hmm. Finally. Give the people what they want. <laughs> the spotlight is all on Anthony. Like I'm just going to take a, a step back as a fan and just Ooh. see where you go. I'm I'm very excited and well more curious actually uh, to see what direction you're going in with this. As am I, I'm having ex- having like written like scrolls of stuff for my show, and I was going through it. And I was like, this is actually really good to me. Mm. I'm just curious to see what Anthony's done and. Um, Thankfully, I'm about to find out. Yeah, you are. I'm curious to see how this is received. I'm curious to see how your show comes out on Friday. I thought it was also interesting to see the in in the draft episode. We talked about potential directions for both of our shows and how we were kind of lining things up. And it's interested to see. I'm interested to see what directions we go in. I mean, even just the basic. I wrote down everything in a notebook on pages. You typed yours up in your phone. We're just on opposite ends of the spectrum in this thing and as yeah. we should be because you know we're mortal enemies for the next several weeks <laughs> wouldn't have it any other way no nor wouldn't would have i any other way uh, now, now before I. uh raw kicks off under your new uh, newfound leadership yep. um the draft which occurred two days ago uh yes. go and check that out obviously because it would help your viewing or listening um experience by just knowing a little background on who's on the shows and like yes. like you just said some of the directions that we potentially could be going in and exploring um it dropped on saturday it is better on youtube i will throw that out there and i'm only really throwing it out there because it took me hours to put it together <laughs> <laughs> plug your work plug your work uh no i actually lost uh two hours of work doing that thing um and and then went just on the rescue mode so go and check that out please make it worth it it is doing well at the moment to this point yes. so um be so. one of the one of the many who have already checked it out and uh, and enjoying it it's a, it's a real draft experience it's not just a here's a picture here's a picture things move no yeah you did a uh, so. all jokes aside you did a real bang up job i thought the preview and the trailer that you did in the weeks leading up to it was great but the episode came out even better and Dits put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and typing, and computer movement into this thing, and it looks great, it feels great, it sounds great, yeah, it's it's a legit experience, it's not just like, here's this picture, he's got, (laughs) he's got motion capture, and all these things that are just, it's it's legit, and again, even if it was shitty, I'd probably still say the same thing, but it's legitimately (laughs) awesome. (laughs) 
So you can expect the same today. You can expect yes. the same today with uh, with Raw show. Um, but the draft itself, yes. Like who? I mean, have you got the list in front of you of who you got in your draft? I do. Oh, fuck, that's preparation there. Uh, if you yes. want to just quickly, I mean, I'm not going to reel off mine because I'll worry about that on Friday. But yeah, uh, who, no one cares anyway. No, nobody cares at the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. At all. A little bit, you know, a little bit. Uh, so who who did you uh, who did you draft? On, so I'll start uh, with night. um, I'll start. Ooh, I like that accent there. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the trade that we did. Um, ah, yes. So I we. We both kind of come to the realization of who our number one picks were going to be. So we outright made a trade before we started. I traded Drew McIntyre from Raw to Dits for AJ Styles. But our only problem with that was AJ is the Intercontinental Champion. Drew is the WWE Champion. So that made kind of an uneven belt situation. So we threw in two other guys to make the belts even. Um, so I threw in Apollo Crews with AJ, or I'm sorry, with Drew to send to SmackDown. And then Ditz added Braun Strowman to AJ to send him my way. So that way we keep, we both have secondary belts. We both have main titles. Although I have to do a little, a uh, bit more work to gain re reputation and prestige back to the IC title and the universal title since Braun's made it a piece of shit. <laughs> so that's how we started out. And then we also decided uh, what we were going to do in terms of groups, like tag teams were going to count as one, but what would we do for groups? And the main groups we really decided on were Imperium an undisputed era. We both were on the fence in terms of liking both of them and didn't know which direction to go in. So Ditz assigned one to heads and one to tails and flipped the digital Google coin. I called it in the air and I was awarded Imperium. So before the draft even started, I got AJ Styles, Braun Strowman, and Imperium. And then my top 10 picks for Raw. Number one, Aleister Black. Number two, Buddy Murphy. Number three, Io Shirai. Number four, Samoa Joe. Number five, Shinsuke Nakamura. Number six, Seth Rollins. Number seven, Roman Reigns. Number eight, Finn Balor. Number nine, Mustafa Ali. And number 10, Cesaro. And then everyone else that was already on the Raw roster that wasn't taken by Ditz remains on the Raw roster for me. taken by Ditz. <laughs> there were a lot taken. Ditz was not pleased with his SmackDown roster, so he did a lot of poaching. I did. Fair enough. I, I mean, you're a pirate. That's what pirates do. Gar. I guess I'm a two now. You are. You have to embrace it. Pirate's life for accept me. Accept it. I accept it. I does. I do. I do accept it. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. Really. I mean, really, that's the the draft in a nutshell. Of course, I'll do my draft um, yep, yep. on on Friday show. But I guess let's just let's just hear what you've got to uh, throw out into the into the universe. Very excited. So I mentioned in the draft episode, and I've alluded to it with the with the jokes about your show. Um, you went with a more sports entertainment aspect. I don't mean that in a negative way or like a shady way. That's just a direction. We joked about it during the draft, and then that's how um, your show has taken shape so far. I wanted to go the route of wrestling being a sport and the sport of professional wrestling. And within that... <laughs> this is going to be like the opposite. My opening match, Raw starts out, so we get the theme. out opening match first thing in the new raw 
Braun Strowman versus Riddick Moss. <laughs> Braun, I know, I know what you're thinking. Braun squashes the shit out of Riddick Moss. Match lasts about 20 seconds. He celebrates. Does his Braun thing, hands in the air, roaring, wearing his tank top that's too small, and his construction boots that, you know, aren't fitting for a wrestler to run around in and do stuff. <laughs> but whatever, he's doing Braun stuff. He's the champ. He roars. Now all of a sudden we get like a kind of quiet. The crowd looks, and we hear Imperium's music. Mm, nice. And Eichner comes out. Thanks. Eich- Eichner comes out, and Barthel Barthel comes out, and Wolf comes out, and they take their stance, and then the ring general himself, Walter, comes out, and he takes his place. Crowd's going fucking nuts because of course they are. Hands behind the back. They do the little Imperium pose. Walter gets a mic. He speaks of how can Braun celebrate having a win like that? Beating beating a smaller, less talented man. No disrespect to Riddick Moss. Smaller, less talented man who doesn't really have a resume, hasn't won anything, hasn't done anything. That's not, that's not honor. And that's not sport. To Walter, and that's not what Imperium is all about because Imperium, much like Walter said when he and Imperium debuted on Raw last year, and Walter spoke to Seth Rollins, Walter says that Imperium is here to restore the honor of our sport. The ring is sacred to them. They are here to restore the honor of the sport of professional wrestling. Crowd goes nuts because, of course, they fucking do. Braun. You know, he's he's a champ. He's been he's been around the block a little a little bit. He says, you know, it's not his fault that he's bigger and stronger than everyone. And it's not his fault that there isn't anybody that can't that that, that can beat him. It's not fault that it's not his fault that he's a quote, gotta throw in the tagline here. It's not his fault that he's a monster among men. But Walter responds and tells him that he's not a monster among men. He's just a big fish in a little pond. And now that Walter and Imperium are here, the pond just got bigger, and so did the fish. Braun says typical Braun shit. I'm the champ. Get these hands. Roar. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. If you think you're so tough, come take this belt from me. But Walter likes to – he wants to take a step back. He just says, you know, Braun just fought, you know, so he, does, he doesn't want to beat someone who's who's weakened a bit. But Braun says, no, like you just mentioned – I didn't, even, I didn't even have to work in this match. I didn't even work up a sweat. And Walter tells Braun that Braun is brash and petulant like a child. He lacks the calculation and the strategery, that's our word, that a champion needs to have. And to prove that and to teach Braun a lesson and to make the sport of professional wrestling a sport again and relevant, he accepts Braun. Mm. He accepts that challenge. And so we have a main event. That'll happen later tonight on Raw. Braun versus Walter for the Universal Championship. Ooh. Signed, sealed, delivered. Right there. About to go to commercial break. As we go to commercial break, we see AJ Styles, man that was traded for from SmackDown to Raw. We see him show up in a nice fancy car. He comes out with his Intercontinental Championship, the new Intercontinental Championship. We ditch that black shit because it's ugly <laughs> and it's terrible. We're back to the old school retro white Intercontinental Championship, the Mr. Perfect Intercontinental Championship. That's what AJ's got on him. He's got a nice pair of sunglasses. He's rocking that mom haircut. He's confident. He's <laughs> calm. He's cool. He's collected. He's on Raw. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial. We got WWE Women's Champion Asuka. She's backstage with Kyrie. They're having a good time. They're laughing. They're joking. Who comes up to say hi? EO fucking Shirai. These three, they go way back. They're buddies. EO comes up. They hug. They talk. They start talking, having a good time. And then the Iconics walk up. And they start talking shit about Asuka and Kyrie. And then they look at EO, and they kind of brush EO off, and they say they don't even know who EO is. They don't know why she's here. This is an NXT. She must be lost. Kind of try to punk her, a little new kid on the block type thing. Asuka defends her. So next week on Raw, we're going to get Asuka... And Io Shirai versus the Iconics. Ooh. That's next week. Hmm. Now we're going to the ring because we have our second match of the night. We got the Street Profits and we got the Viking Raiders. 
tag team match. Back and forth, a little fun, a little excitement. Street Profits do their really exciting, you know, aerial stuff. Viking Raiders look like Vikings, so that's fun, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) The Street Profits win. Victory for them. Celebration. Once again, we get some Imperium music. Barthel and Eichner come out, and they talk about the Street Profits, and they talk about the prestige that has been lost from the tag team division. Just several weeks ago, you know, you guys were fighting the the opponents that you faced tonight. You guys were playing putt-putt and basketball and fighting ninjas in parking lots, and that's got nothing to do with the sport of professional wrestling. That's not honor. That's got nothing to do with the tag team titles. That's not what wrestling should be about. And since Barthel and Eichner were... NXT Tag Team Champions, and they had to relinquish those titles when they were called up to Raw. They feel that they're the best tag team on the Raw roster. And so they challenge the Street Profits to a tag team title match next week. And of course, the Street Profits are not ones to turn down or back away from a challenge. They want the smoke. They say it all the time. They say their catchphrase a whole bunch. They accept that challenge. So next week, not only do we have Asuka and EO versus the Iconics, but we have the Street Profits versus Imperium in a tag team title match. Things are shaping up for next week. Things are fucking shaping up for next week. <laughs> Commercial break. Commercial is for Snickers or something that sponsors the show. I haven't decided what the show sponsors are yet, but I will. <laughs> Come back from commercial. We got our third match of the night. Finn Balor versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Ooh. Really good match. Good barn burner. A lot of action, back and forth. Pace. Some might compare it to a more Japanese style of wrestling, a more New Japan style. Of course, that's the way I'm going to book because New Japan is the best promotion in the world, but we're not talking about that right now. We're just talking about what's going on on Raw. But again, Raw is about the sport of professional wrestling now, and Balor and Shinsuke have a very, very, very good match. But neither man is able to gain the pinfall on the other. Go back and forth. We got about a 25-minute match. Crazy. Unheard of for Raw. Very good match. Eventually, both men, while the match is still going on, end up on the outside. And they're so flustered and frustrated that neither of them has been able to get the pinfall on the other. They just start brawling on the outside. Fists and kicks and punches. We're not seeing moves or Irish whips into the barricade. It's just straight punch after punch after punch. They're laying into each other. So much so that they don't even recognize the referee doing the 10 count inside the ring both men lose in a double count out as they brawl on the outside and they don't recognize the referee's 10 count the bell hits they announce that both men lost they both stand on the outside of the ring and look in shock and then we hear aj styles music aj styles comes out rocking those sweet shades that awesome outfit that he's wearing and his stupid mom haircut but it looks good because he conditions it and it looks soft (laughs) He's got that IC title, and he comes out, and he talks about building things, and he talks about how he was on SmackDown, and SmackDown became the house that AJ Styles built, and recently he became Intercontinental Champion, and now he's in the process of building up the reputation of the Intercontinental Championship, and he he notes that he was traded four on Raw, but he has it on pretty good authority that he would have been the number one pick for Raw had he not been traded for. And then he looks at Finn and Shinsuke and he asks them, you know, with everything I've built and I've done since I've been here, what have what have you guys built? He berates both men for losing in a match, saying, how can a match have two losers? I've never seen a match with two losers. You guys both lost. This is a joke. He says, I used to know you guys. Like, what the hell happened? I've I've wrestled against you guys. I've seen you guys all over the world. Shinsuke, you were one of the best in this game at one point. Now you're 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 losing in a count out. Finn Balor, you had to go back to the minors in NXT to try and gain some semblance of who you used to be. Shinsuke, I don't even know who you are, or what the hell you've been doing. While me, you know, AJ Styles, I've been killing it on the Intercontinental Champ. And he tells them they need to like they need to get their shit together. And he says shit. Because we're saying shit on Raw now. I got the clearance from the network. (laughs) He says, you boys need to get your shit together. And then he laughs, and he drops the mic, and he walks backstage. 
leaving both men out there to kind of contemplate their thoughts. He walks backstage, and we get a backstage segment now. We get Cesaro. We get a quick little interview with Cesaro asking him his thoughts on how does he feel about being on Raw, how does he feel about being drafted and leaving SmackDown, and he says, you know, now that he's on Raw, he really wants to take this chance to be more than he was before. He feels that he's one of the best pound-for-pound athletes in all of wrestling. He is the strongest pound-for-pound man in all of wrestling, but he keeps getting overlooked. Despite his accomplishments and and his athleticism and his talent and his work, He keeps getting overlooked. People don't see the work that he does. So he says now that he's on Raw, he's going to take this opportunity to make people see him. And he's going to take what he can. We go to commercial break. Come back from commercial. Fourth match. Tag team match. Seth Rollins, Buddy Murphy versus Aleister Black and Ricochet. I like how you've still got those two together. Yep. Yep. Trying to keep some consistency, not going crazy. Mm-hmm. Good match, good tag team match, good back and forth. Aleister Black and Ricochet are so, 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 so very close. Buddy Murphy gets hit with the Black Mass. Ricochet goes up top. He's going to hit a 450 from the top rope. He's about to end this match. They're about to beat Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. But Seth Rollins grabs a chair, hits Aleister Black on the outside with the chair. Hits Ricochet on the top rope with the chair. Ricochet falls at, falls down. Buddy eventually gets back up, and he and Seth both, both beat down Aleister Black and Ricochet. Beat, they beat him down, hitting him with chairs, hitting him with everything. And then we get some music, and it's music that we haven't heard for a long time. And it's the big dog. It's Roman Reigns. He's fucking back because in, in, our, in our universe, COVID is gone, so he feels confident. He's back. Big dog hits the ring. Sprints his ass off, slides into the ring. Buddy and Seth, they, they scatter. They clear out. They don't want anything with Roman Reigns. He's the big dog. He's the best wrestler in the world, so says Vince McMahon. Roman Reigns stands tall, stands over. Alistair and Ricochet, as Seth and Buddy stand outside, they're cleared out. Roman standing tall, staring down Seth, asking him, tough talking him, kind of barking at him a little bit. And Alistair and Ricochet get up. And they stare down Seth and Buddy. And then Seth starts to smile. And then Roman Reigns starts to smile and turns around and he spears the ever-loving shit out of Alistair Black. And then he gets up and he Samoan drops Ricochet. And Seth and Buddy come in. And Seth and Buddy and Roman Reigns beat down Alistair Black and Ricochet. The crowd is cheering because we got a Roman Reigns bad guy moment. And they're just beating the shit out of Black and Ricochet. And it sucks. They get beat down. They leave the ring. And they walk by commentary. And Roman looks at Samoa Joe, who's on commentary. And gives him a little bit of a, what, you know, you got a problem. You got something to say. Joe remains calm. You know, Joe's a consummate professional. He's like, no, I'm good. Says he's fine. Roman kind of tough talks him. He's like, yeah, you know, that's what I figured. That's what I thought. And then he slaps the headset off of Samoa Joe. Oof, mistake. Samoa Joe stands up very slowly. Very slowly. And he stares down Roman Reigns. Then Seth and Buddy come over. And they stare down Joe with Roman. And they all all laugh at Joe. They stare at Joe and just kind of laugh at him. But Joe recognizes the numbers. It is what it is. So he just kind of nods and lets them go go about their way. They turn and they turn and leave. Joe grabs Roman Reigns by his stupid bulletproof vest and pulls him into the choke. And he starts choking the shit out of Roman Reigns. Has him down on the ground. Seth and Buddy are wailing away on Joe, trying to pry him off Roman, but he can't. It's like it's like a dog who's locked in to someone's ankle, some like a tack dog. Joe is locked in. He's got the choke in. He's got the clutch. Roman's starting to not be able to breathe. Seth grabs a chair, wails away on Joe, Gets finally gets Joe off. It starts to weaken him a bit. Buddy and Seth continue to beat down on Samoa Joe. Roman Reigns eventually gets back up. All three men then shield bomb Samoa Joe through the announcer's table, leaving the announcer's table destroyed. Samoa Joe in a heap. He's bleeding, by the way, from his mouth. 
Aleister Black and Ricochet are in the ring. They're knocked out. They're done. Roman, Seth, and Buddy pause, pause, pose, and pause, I guess. <laughs> At the top of the entrance ramp, we go to commercial break. Oh. Oh, Anthony. Oh, God. You know, the only reason I drafted Roman Reigns. I'm making him heal. I like we it. We come back. I like it, too. We come back from break. Mustafa Ali interview. Another recent Raw draftee. Asking Mustafa Ali, you know, now that he's back and now that he got his first name again, he's mm-hmm. got two names instead of one. How does he feel? How does he feel on Raw? Does he feel, you know, invigorated? You know, we spoke to Cesaro last night. He wanted to make a new name for himself here. Is that something you're looking to do? You know, what's going on? And Mustafa Ali talks about he wants respect. He feels that he's not... He's not a person who's been getting chances. And he recognizes that he's been injured, but he thinks a lot of it he's been looked down upon. He's been looked at unfairly. He recognizes the run that Kofi Kingston made, you know, to WrestleMania and went to the title, but that was his spot. And that's how he sees it. He sees that Kofi, not in nothing against Kofi, but Kofi got my spot. And that could have been me. That should have been me. I deserve respect. I should get a chance. And off camera, as Ali says this, we hear a laugh. Couple laughs and a snicker. Camera turns over, and it's AJ Styles again. He's sitting there with his belt, and he's on his phone. He's going through Instagram. He's just laughing. Mustafa Ali asks him, like, "Oh, you know, what's funny?" And AJ says, "Oh, you know, I was just like listening to your interview, and I just thought it was funny, you know, because the reason you don't get respect is because you suck." So Ali says, "Oh," and AJ says, "You know, but it's cute that you think you deserve things, because I don't think you deserve anything, because you're not good enough to be here." You weren't good enough to be on SmackDown. You're not good enough to be here. And you don't deserve to be here. And then AJ walks off laughing to himself. He gives a whole he gives a little uh little head shake so he can let his hair flow in the breeze a little bit. Oh, yeah. Puts his inner puts his intercontinental title up on his shoulder and he struts away. Camera looks into Mustafa Ali's eyes as AJ struts away. Main event time. We get Walter versus Braun. For the Universal Championship. First Raw under new management. First Raw after this draft. Main event. Walter comes out. Braun comes out. Champion always comes out second. They have a good hard-hitting match. Good back and forth. But unfortunately for Braun Strowman, he's no match for the ring general. And he's not ready for Raw to be the sport of professional wrestling that Imperium is looking to make it, Braun loses to Valter. And we have, on the first episode of Raw under new management, we have a new Universal Champion, and that champion is Valter. He grabs the title, and he takes the title, and he tells everyone that the ring is sacred. And him winning this belt tonight is step one, in proving that, in in revamping Monday Night Raw and making it the sport of professional wrestling again, restoring the honor to this brand, to this company, to this belt. He looks at the belt with its stupid blue coloring, and he says, this belt is going to change, this company's going to change, this brand is going to change. Walter is a professional. He claims that he, 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 he claims it because he is. He says he is a professional, and the ring should be treated professionally he will restore honor to the universal title imperium will restore honor to raw he says this is a new age of raw it is the the age of sport it is the age of imperium puts his belt around his waist as the imperium theme is ringing throughout the arena fans are on their feet don't know what to do but they're excited all four men pose in the ring Looking as dapper as ever. Walter, newly crowned Universal Champion. The copyright comes up in the bottom right hand of the screen. And we fade to black because this this show is over. And that is episode one of my Monday Night Raw. Very good. Thank you. Very good. I I hope it comes off. I hope hope you're not just patronizing me. I genuinely like it. I thought it was good. No, no. I'm especially... I mean, I'm... We'll, we'll go in a direction now where we we treat this as raw talk and we talk about the show. Ooh, Ooh we like that. Um, I like no, I, I really dig 
where you're going with with Reigns, because if I managed to keep him on SmackDown as the GM, I would have turned him heel as well. Ooh, I like it. I don't know what I would have done with him, because I wouldn't have had Seth Rollins or Buddy Murphy. So obviously you, you've conjured that up um, purely because you have those available to you. But I don't know how he would have turned heel on my show, but I can be fucking damn sure that he would. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> Absolutely. We'll find out next week on why Roman has aligned himself with Seth and Buddy. But I didn't I didn't plan to take Reigns at all. And then we were going through the draft, and as I go back to my notes, yeah, I took Reigns seventh, mm-hmm. and I took Rollins sixth. And I was looking at the roster, and I remember looking at the SmackDown roster, and I was like, Roman Reigns is interesting. And I don't – I said it all along, like, I don't hate Roman Reigns. He was my favorite member in the Shield – um, I, I've never thought he was bad. I just thought he got booked terribly and he got yeah. booked in a way that made me hate him. I don't think he's a tremendous wrestler. Um, but I think he's really athletic. He's a good WWE I, wrestler. Yeah, he's a good WWE wrestler, but he's, he's athletic enough that he, when he had that match with AJ Styles, that match was phenomenal. Yeah. No, no, all, no pun intended with the phenomenal thing. Like if you give him a quality dance partner, he can put on a very good match. And so I don't think he's terrible. I definitely soured on him because the way he got booked. But I was always like, oh, you know, if he just like embrace the heel thing, just be a dick, do your thing and go with it that way. But they never went with it that way. And so I drafted him as soon as I drafted him. My thought was like, I'm making him fucking heel. And I even have in my notes like I have written down. So I have Seth Rollins six, Roman Reigns seven. And then I have an arrow from Reigns to Rollins. And I wrote join Seth Rollins. And I didn't know how, (laughs) but I put it in. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, and I like how Joe feeds into that as well. Like that, yeah. if, if, I, if that was an actual thing that had just aired on TV, like that, that is the thing that I think, I was saying that, the, obviously the big moment is, is Volta um, becoming new Universal Champion on day one. Yes. Um, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, but I think for, from my side of it, I, I'd be talking about Roman turning and then the Joe part because... I'm a huge fan of Samojo. He was on my draft. Yes, he was. Uh, so I'm I'm gutted that you have him because I would have done something, you know, similar. It would have been he would have still been on commentary and then he would have fed in um, to being back in the ring again. Uh, but yeah, the way you did it, the way it was executed, very good. And the fact you morphed two things together. Oh, I try, I try, mm. and I like the. Uh, I wanted to make sure like. I knew Joe had to get beat down, but I also wanted to make him look like credible. So I got that that vision of like him just not releasing the choke on Roman and having to be pried off like a rabid dog by two other dudes who had to use a weapon to pry him off. I was like, okay, that's a good look. And, and now I, we've got this interesting feud. Yeah, and I, I know you've done some good stuff there as well because, A, I didn't really say much because I was just enjoying what you were saying. But... I was like, he either loves it or he hates it because he's not <laughs> saying anything. Um, but I, I was just, I was, I was literally just sat there and I was just like, just vid- I was just imagining it in my head as it was all playing out. And I was like, if this was on TV, I, I would enjoy it. Um, so I think as a first show, yeah, you've definitely made a statement with that. And you've got some right. good stuff planned for next week as well. You haven't. You haven't messed around here. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of direction. Again, this culminates in SummerSlam. So the thought was, and you and I spoke about it off show, was like, okay, we we each we each roughly did the same thing, which was we wrote out like what we wanted our SummerSlam card to be, and then you have to obviously go back to your first show, and it's like, okay, like how do you get from point A to point W here and make it make sense? So there's a lot of things cooking. Episode two is going to be. Just as good, if not better. You're going to get a lot of explanation in some things, and some new feuds are going to start to develop to push us in that direction of SummerSlam. And we're going to see if uh, Walter's claims about the Age of Imperium, if that's uh, going to come to fruition. As you know, now that Barthel and Eichner have tag team title opportunity the next week, they're making some claims, some bold claims. See what happens with Cesaro and Mustafa Ali. What happens with Finn and Shinsuke and Ali and AJ and... Asuka. Ah, yeah, the the AJ um, Balor and Nakamura thing. I like where that's going as well. Yeah, I like the idea of AJ just walking around like he's like the most important <laughs> dude ever, just kind of shitting on everybody and being like, "You suck." Yeah, I dig that. I like how you got him in shades as well. 
course. That's an ultimate <laughs> bad guy look like. No one wears shades at nighttime, and he does because he's a dick. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. I dig with. that. I dig that. That was a good show. That was Muchly. a good show. You should be happy Muchly. with that. I'm excited. I Again, the, the my whole thing was like the sport of wrestling. That's what I wanted to go with it in. I wanted like the match. Uh, granted, we're not breaking down like each match we're not going to be like okay like yeah like we talked about yesterday you know match starts with like hip toss into this into that and then it, at the seven move minute mark move. this happened exactly yeah. we're not doing that but the concept is still there and i think with the with the ending to this show and the start of it you know again you got to got to build that title back up and volter is a he's an imposing man and imperium is going to be an imposing group and everything that he said hopefully can be proven in order to establish some honor back to this shitty title <laughs> that no one, that obviously you gave so little about that you were easily like, yeah, okay, I'll trade him for Apollo Crews. Yeah, you, you could not, you could, you could, exactly, you could not have given less fucks about Braun Strowman. That's true, because threw him in. ultimately, I, I traded the IC title for the WWE title. I did not trade the Universal title. No. for the WWE. In fact, you I traded, traded the universe for the US title. That's terrible. <laughs> no disrespect to the US title, but like that should never no. happen. But I, I still stand firm. That Universal title is a mid card title, in my opinion. It really is. Oh, of course it is, and that's why that's what Walter was talking about, yeah. and that's what he's going to change. Ooh. Ooh. I'm excited. Yeah. Now, now you got to wonder, like, now that Walter's champ. Who's going to challenge Walter? Where does that well, go? I, I'm sure that you know. I do I know. Don't, I don't. That'd be bad if I didn't. I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, because I, I got know. no idea. To be fair, I actually, I'm, apart from some stuff, I actually don't know what is happening week two of, of SmackDown. But we don't even know what's happening week one of SmackDown, because we haven't had that no. show yet, of course. We have not. We have not had that show, but I'm very excited for it. I like some of the direction you've gone in, some of the little... Not gonna spoil it or expose it here, but you gave away some nice little tidbits mm -hmm. during the draft that I am very much on board for and very much excited for. It's gonna be good. I'm excited. I mean, it's not gonna be as good as mine, but it'll still be good. I don't know. You've done some really good stuff here, actually. Well, I was like, yeah, I'm sure. That's. I think I've got. I think I've got at least one thing that could probably equal the rain Ooh. stuff. The range thing is the top thing for you? Yeah, massively. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I've because I think it's more because I, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. Yeah, and the universal title sucks. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um, but I've, I'm like you. I've, I've wanted Reigns to turn heel for so long. It is, I've, I've never been against Reigns. I've never been anti Reigns. Um, it's, I've, I've just always been a firm believer that that booking has just been absolutely shoddy um, post Shield. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I've clamored for a heel turn because I think it would actually do him wonders. And they're not doing it. So the fact that you've done it is uh, music to my ears. Yeah, I'm pretty so, excited. And, and it gives another Joe uh, into it as well. So. And I factor Joe. You know, I was actually going to give... My initial plan was give Joe the belt. All Ooh. I knew going into... And I said it during the draft. All I knew was that night one, Braun was losing that belt. That's yeah. all I knew. I was like, he's not getting it. And my first thought was Joe. Um, but then with Imperium, I thought I'd go a different direction. <laughs> and then with the Roman Excuse Reigns me. thing. Good. And then with with Roman Reigns, I thought that would go in a better in a better direction to throw Joe in there. And that's a cool six-man feud, Seth and mm. Buddy and Roman and Alistair, Ricochet, and Joe. And I was like, oh, you know, that that's – again, my – all jokes aside, I sat after the draft and then writing like this episode, and I was like, I, "My roster is too deep. I don't know how to get everybody into everything." And I, even just like the ten, the ten that I wanted and the ten that I drafted, I was like, "Even if I just took them by themselves and you broke them up into matches, that'd be ten people divided by five matches, two people for each match. That's all ten right there." But then I've still got other people on the roster, and I was like, "Shit, like." How do I, and I didn't even use Rey Mysterio on this show, Cedric Alexander, Dolph Ziggler, Andrade, and Garza. Yeah, sure. Jesus, you have Things a lot will be of... coming. The women's roster, I didn't use Ruby or Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan. Becky. Man, no, did, wait, does she count? Yeah, like if, if she's... Time if, out! If, Becky counts? I'd say Becky counts. 
Oh, boy. I literally just wrote this in all caps at the top of my third page. <laughs> yeah, I'd say because everyone's miraculously recovering from injury. So she's all of a sudden had a baby and done her nine months maternity. Oh, man. Oh, she's back. boy, this just changed the game. <laughs> I'm giving her the IC title. I should have had her beat Braun. Yeah, there you go. I've just given oh, you like another draft pick, essentially. You a thousand percent did. I was yeah. not counting Becky whatsoever. I mean, I was too busy being infatuated with Nia Jax, a.k.a. the greatest <laughs> women's wrestler of all time. But now, oh, man. There you go. Oh, boy. I've what a next up. week or I've opened some, some doors for you, Zero F. Bit of a Pandora's box. And I'm also like, but I'm like, oh, sweet. But I'm also like, fuck, how am I going to incorporate Becky? That's a fair one, actually. That's that's where I'm, because I was looking at my roster today when I was um, putting my first show together. I was like, I'm like, I'm happy with my roster. and what, the, the actual draft that I did, the, the remains are pretty poor. Um, the dregs <laughs> of the draft that's, are essentially yeah, what I received. Society. Um, yeah. So, essentially, I could just build SmackDown for the next five weeks over the ten guys exactly. that I drafted with the odd person chipping in here and there, and it'd still be pretty good. Whereas you have got your ten picks and then other great people. Yeah. So I think you're in a, I, I think you're in a tougher situation in regards to that than I am. Because I, I find it a lot easier to book and not go, ah, but I'm, I'm leaving him off the card... He hasn't had a place on there. Like I don't really yep. have that issue, which is no, and which is good. I'm legitimate. I'm like, oh, it's cool, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I'm literally like, oh, fuck, this is a pain. I think I'm gonna try and uh, talk to Vince and bring back Sunday Night Heat so I can just <laughs> get these guys some extra shine. Well, if you're getting that, I'm getting Velocity. Damn. Oh yeah. That's fine. Good luck. Good luck booking Velocity with the dregs. <laughs> exactly. That's what Velocity is for. Is for the dregs. True. <laughs> it is for the dreg. Dregs. Dregs. Velocity. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, a, as far as first shows go, that's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. But, I like it, uh, yeah. But, it has to measure up to SmackDown this week. It does. Mm-hmm. Mm, anticipation. It is. Now, uh, the be- well, I guess the best thing about these episodes as well is that they're not as long as the ones we usually do, so they're easier to consume. Digest. So there is that as well. This was, ki- this was kind of like a pilot point of, say, of, like, feeling it out and yep. how long it would be to record... Um, but I think, well, we're probably going to go for another like three or four minutes here. But like forty-five yep. minutes is pretty a pretty good range. Um, and this is where I do my SmackDown. It goes over like two hours. I, I actually yeah, right. I, I actually follow it. <laughs> a three hour, two hour show. You do you do actual commercials and write scripts for like three minute long commercials and everything in between. And look, you saw how long my fucking notes were. Before yeah, we started recording. there's a lot, and I'm wondering to see how again because you wrote yours on your phone and I wrote them down. I wonder if like you put pen to paper how your notes would come out in terms of how much space they occupy versus mine. It'd be, oh, it'd be a lot less. I hate writing. Really? Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's purely the only reason why it's on my phone because I hate writing. I can't type my notes. I have to write them by hand. No. See, I'm I'm not as old school as you are. No, I mean again, you are. That's where we differ. You're here to sports entertain. I am, and you will be sports entertained this Friday. I can tell you that. I hope so. Again, yeah. that network is really, you know, clamoring for our heads. We haven't been delivering a uh, positive return on investment so far. Until now. Oh, um, no. But Anthony, that is that is pretty much your time in the spotlight over and done with. Uh, Monday Night Raw Night Uno. Um, yep. So we're not really going to hear much from you until Monday next week. That's correct. Mm, which is um, I'm correct. sure a, a blessing for many. Yeah, well, when you mean many, you mean, like, no one. I get it. Well, it's opposite. Well, yeah, you. <laughs> but no one else. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with next uh, uh, next week. But we do have Friday Night Smackdown to look forward to. My Friday Night Smackdown. So be sure mm. to check that out this Friday. Or if you're listening to this series, if you're binging, this, if you're waiting for, like, a few episodes to come out before binging on it, because you can do that because it's the right time time length and all that kind of stuff to uh to perfectly a- achieve such a thing mm. um just go to the next episode yeah just do that just do that but if you're not Talk doing that and you're actually following along with it this friday i will be uh putting together night one of my smackdown my smackdown 
Gonna I'm sure it. it'll um it. <coughs> be uh yeah good. Oh, it's gonna be good. I heard. I am not sport entertained. That's, that's, that's what it's oh, be. are you not sports entertained? Yeah. Braveheart. Just kidding, gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, did you what? <laughs> uh, right. So, Anthony, get your plugs out of the way um, before we say goodbye to you. I am Anthony. I am co-host of the Dow Pod. Find me on Twitter at Wack. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> but I mean, the network gets what the network wants. <laughs> Find me on Twitter at wagons underscore warpass. The reason my Twitter handle is wagons underscore warpass is because I host a Buffalo Sports Talk podcast, a weekly Buffalo Sports Talk podcast titled Wagons and Warpaths, focusing on the Buffalo Bills, the wagons, if you will, and the warpaths, the Buffalo Sabres, if you will. But based on how this COVID offseason has gone and this COVID world has gone, it's been much, much, much more Buffalo Bills than it has Buffalo Sabres. I am also a featured writer for Last Word on ProFootball.com. You can find my articles on there every single week covering the Buffalo Bills and other trending NFL stories in the NFL. And you can find the Wagons and Warpaths podcast on Apple iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And you can find me here on the Dow Pod every week. And for the next five weeks, you can find me as the Raw GM kicking the shit out of Ditz's <laughs> shitty SmackDown every single week. Nice. And, and, and I want to add, there's people still listening, which of course there are. Feel free to at me in the Twitter comments or at me in Twitter to let me know how awesome the show was or how terrible the show was or how handsome I sound or how dumb Ditz is for just everything. Um, yeah, feel free to do that. We would, I'm sure Ditz would echo the same thing. So that way we, again, we, we're doing this because we enjoy it, but I think the engagement aspect from the listeners is super awesome as well and definitely wouldn't turn that away. Absolutely that's not. Absolutely not. Um, and I, I, I used to, back in the day, used to plug, oh, the, this is where we're available on uh, these certain pop- podcast applications. But you're already listening to us, so why the hell should I even bother? You already got your favorite. But we can tell you that we're also available on YouTube. If you go to Dits on YouTube, you will find my channel where all these podcast episodes are going to be. And for this series specifically, as we've already mentioned, um, you do get like a visual experience alongside the audio so to be honest that's the that's the place to be if yes. you're gonna tune into this thing go go over to youtube because it just looks a bit snazzier to watch but if you can't it's just as easy to digest just through your ears or your car stereo or wherever you want to do it um mm. but you can find me at dits on wrestling on twitter again like I, i'll be pumping plugs out for this thing and posts and all that good stuff so uh, feel free to at me or anthony about the show and tell us how we're doing okay. um all all interaction is greatly appreciated but um that is us for for today but we will see you on friday, mm. friday night smackdown baby oh, man. oh i see what you did oh, there ho, ho, ho. randy orton right <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Randy Orton, baby. Give me change. Yep. I like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. where I'm going. That's where I'm going. I need to stop doing that. Because mm-hmm, it's really annoying. <laughs> baby. See you on Friday.